Welcome to One Plus One, I'm Barry Cassidy. Well, I'm sure you've all heard of Jimmy Barnes. He's one of Australia's most successful music artists of all time. And during COVID with their online performances, we got to know the whole extended family a little better, particularly his wife, Jane. There's a lot more to know about Jane. She's got a great passion for food as well as music. The two of them have put out a cookbook together. Apart from that, Jane has never done a television interview without Jimmy. So we're about to set her straight on that. So an extended interview with Jane Barnes right after a little brunch with Jane and Jimmy. So, brunch with the Barneses. <laughs> what, what are we having? <laughs> okay, so I thought we would have lobster tail scrambled eggs. I thought you could make it. I've prepared it for you. Yeah, if I'm giving, giving good instructions, <laughs> I'll give it a go. So I start off by breaking let's, some eggs. Let's break some eggs. I guess you I can, can do put that. the shells in yep. there. How, how many eggs are we putting into this? I thought seven might be a nice number. Lucky number. Yes. <laughs> Not lucky for the lobster. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll add a bit of milk. She yeah, like to the do. Way I done it. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the way it works with you? I mean, you just sit around and I watch just, all I do, the I time. Just, and no, no, why don't you get bossed around and do stuff? Is it really the, the case of the chef and the cook? Or the... No, no, I'm sort of more of the. No, we're not chef. chefs. We are not chefs at all. <laughs> we're not. Chefs. We're, not. We just learn, we're just learn home things cooks. And, and like to cook food that tastes great. So. Luckily, we have lots of chefy friends. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay, let's heat that up. You know how to scramble that. Come on, well, Barry. Look, you can do it. You're going to have to help me out here because if I was to burn <laughs> scrambled eggs, <laughs> how embarrassing would that be? What I'm really good at, I'm good at cleaning up. Yeah. Right to the centre, just like that. Ah. Just draw it in like that. Incredible yeah. pressure. There's always been a bit of competition in your family. There is, there talking, is, there right? is. Such a large family. I well, guess... when, we, when the kids were little, you can tell the story. Yeah, we would team up, for, you know, for the night. And like Jackie, my son, and I would team up. Jane and, and Ellie Mae would team up. Uh, team up. Nijay and Mahalia would team up. And it would take turns cooking a meal. And you'd have to shop, style the, the table. Plan the menu. Plan the menu <laughs> and cook it. Yes. Now it's starting to cook, so we're going to add the lobster and oh, it's already, already cooked. Already, yep. It's already cooked, so we're just sort of going to warm Feels it up. Feels so decadent having lobster with an omelette. You can pepper, Jimmy. Okay. Can I sit oh, at the wow. table now? <laughs> You're nearly there. Any minute we're just going to take it off and then you just let the rest of it cook. That looks pretty good to me. Maybe you should do this bit. I'd, I'd hate to ruin it right now. Well, at the I'm end. doing it. I think that looks pretty, <laughs> that looks pretty good. You've done a good job so far, though. You've right? done very I think well. You've got, I think you've got the job. <laughs> you and I are the kitchen hands. And I really didn't want to mess up scrambled eggs. Oh, yeah. You've done a Look at this, perfect. perfect. Job. And you can just, you can make it pretty. So this can be coriander, so coriander. or maybe parsley. And, and what have we got here? Yeah, how about we just use a little bit of, of chilli oil on there. It's not too hot. That's it. Mm. Are you ready to taste? I sure am. I think you should. I'm get a nice big, make sure big piece of lobster. Yeah. <clears throat> got a bit of the chilli there. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> oh, that's great. So you'll be able to make that uh, for next luncheon. I should be able to manage that. <laughs> you right, no, but you know what? Everybody who comes to our house, they just love it. Mm. It's a real, just a taste flavour is, is fantastic. Yeah. Well, um, Jimmy, this is one plus one, so. Oh, I'll so go I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I know where I'm not uh, wanted. <laughs> time to say goodbye. All right, see you guys. Good luck. Enjoy. Thank God they've gone, eh? This is the best part of the show. So welcome to my cooking show. Uh, <laughs> mm. Barry, you've got it. Well, Jane Barnes, welcome to One Plus One. Thank you. I've got a better understanding now of, uh, of why the two of you put so much work into a cookbook because you really are comfortable in the kitchen together. Yes. 
And does that Correct. come from <laughs> being part of a large family? I think so, but and certainly um, part of my family. Um, we're Thai and family and extended family is just very important to us, like a lot of cultures here. And um, food is important. So. And in the book, the recipes, are they mainly yours? Well, they're some of Jimmy's. You'll be surprised how, mu how much of it is his. He's, um, especially um, through the last 18 months of lockdown, he's become very, 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 very good. He does the sourdough baking. He does all the grilling and, and charcoal dinners. So he's not just the guy who makes the gravy when you have a Sunday <laughs> roast. He's... <laughs> Mostly, no, no, no. He's like, you know, makes a pavlova now and we, we're like stuck home together. So he can't sit still really. So he decided to join me in the kitchen more. We will return to the, the theme of uh, food a little later on, mm -hmm. but I, I really am keen to hear the whole uh, Jane and Jimmy story from the beginning. And it seems to me that, that both you and Jimmy are evidence that sometimes anyway, opposites attract. I think so. It's a long story, yeah. <laughs> 40 years. Yeah. And um, I, I think we do, we are total opposites pretty much. But as we're finding out there's things, that there's music that we have in common, music and food, you know, the languages of the soul really. So I think if we can connect with that, that's a pretty strong place to come from. Yeah, but um, in, in background terms, of course, you couldn't be more different and, and we'll go through that. Mm -hmm. Um, with Jimmy was in Scotland mm -hmm. and as he said himself he lived in virtual poverty and it was a family running from debt for a long time and they went from Scotland to South Australia. Was he a bit of a rough diamond? I think that's a good phrase to describe it yeah. and I sort of used that you know in my early days and trying to explain things to my parents but you know I think the Scots and the Thais have quite a lot in common as well you know that family is important to both both cultures. Whereas he, he says, well, he didn't have much food. But I grew up with the privilege of all the food in the world. Yeah. So. Well, we'll talk about was... um, how you grew up. But first of all, I want to go back a bit, even before you, in fact, because I'm fascinated by this. Your mother uh, was one of, of 26 kids. 26 Seriously? children, 26. yes. My grandfather came from China before the revolution to Thailand. And um, he had seven wives. So in those days, it was a symbol of wealth. And I mean, when you think about it, it's not all that long ago, but um, you know, in my lifetime. And yes, yeah, so, and he found the Golden Buddha. It's the biggest piece of solid gold and it, there's a temple there, Wat Rai Mit in Bangkok, and he's buried there. Oh. So that's my legacy. And when you say it's a symbol of wealth, you'd need to be wealthy, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, so you see, it was acceptable kids. in that culture as long as everybody was kept in the same manner. So, right. um, you know, if all the wives had their accommodations and all the children were brought up and they, my, my mother studied in England and so they w were sent overseas to, to be educated. So you had a lot of uncles and aunties. Yes. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> I a don't lot of think them? I know all of them. No. <laughs> now, your mother divorced when you were four, and she marries an Australian diplomat. Yes, on his first posting right. to Thailand. Right. Uh, yes. That must have transformed your life. Um, yeah, I think you know. As children, you don't really know as long as you you have your you know, all your needs met, your know, safety net. I, I don't know that I was just sort of aware of that. It was, life has always been a bit of an adventure for me and we we're always sort of taught change is a part of life. So that's how I, I saw it. But you travelled the world and you were being educated at, at this point. Mm -hmm. you, you went to places like Rome, and Moscow, mm -hmm. Tokyo. Yes, yes. It, it must have been, Malaysia. those years must have been full of wonderment. Amazing. It was a very, you know, privileged upbringing and uh, being able to be educated in different systems. Like, you know, I went to English school in Rome and um, when I was in Malaysia, that was American system. And in between postings, we'd come back and Canberra was our base. So I went to school there as well. That must have and been a bit of a shock when 
the first time that you came to Australia, right? You, you mm -hmm. settled in, in Canberra. Well, it was completely different. Just school lunches, for instance. And I remember going to Griffith Primary in Canberra and having to put in a lunch order and, and I got a peanut butter sandwich and that was like a bit of a shock to the system. Although I love peanut butter and Vegemite, but, right. you know, that... It, and in those days, you know, in the 60s, certainly you couldn't get many ingredients in Canberra. You, you, mm. you couldn't really... I mean, all the restaurants here now and the, the food culture has just exploded compared to when I first arrived in Australia. Now, Canberra was not a large town in the 60s. It, it would have been quite a no, shock. No, but it, it was but used to having other cultures there because all the embassies yeah. were there. Mm. So, you know, in that sense, I think it was different than growing up anywhere else. So you, you go to university or start university in Canberra. Mm -hmm. By this stage, you'd learnt quite a few languages with I've your travels? I've learned five languages because right. um, going to an English school in Rome, you, English system, you have to learn Latin, or the, with, not counting Latin, but French. And being in Italy, had to learn Italian. So I learned English, French and Italian. I had Thai already. And then before, before you go to a posting, the family usually gets you know, language lessons, depending where you're going. So we uh, started learning Russian before Dad was posted to Moscow. And um, so when I came back and started university, that was one of my subjects, right. continued learning. What else did you choose to study at the time? Well, um, growing up in all the different systems of education, what I found, the common language was maths to me. So I studied pure mathematics mm -hmm. and I decided to go on that stream for a while, but then being really indecisive and not knowing what I really wanted to do, I changed back to two languages. Now that's so, just pre-Jimmy days, only just. Yes. W what did you do for fun before Jimmy came along? Oh, I just had to study. <laughs> <laughs> I studied, so had a group of friends at uni who like, you know, were surfies, but, you know, I'd go and sit at the beach while they surfed, and but I'd be always like, trying to get my assignments done and learn one plus one, one plus one, using the square root of ne negative one, which is an, a, the letter I, things yeah. like that. Right, we try to so keep it. So it's a bit of a nerd, I suppose. Simpler than that. Um, <laughs> so finally we get to the yin and yang period, mm -hmm. that Jane meets the quintessential working class man. How did you meet? What, what happened? Well, um, there was a show at the ANU and I was there backstage with some other friends and he, you know, was there and just asked me what, what we're doing after the show. And I said, well, you know, we're actually having a party. It was at my girlfriend's parents' place. And um, yes, yeah, that's where we met. So did you hit it off right away? Did you think that this, he's an interesting guy? What, what, what was your yeah, first impression? I, he, he made me laugh a lot and mm. I was very comfortable with him. And, um, but I do remember calling them a taxi because you know, I just wasn't used to, to people sort of staying on mm. and it wasn't my own place or anything like that. So I did surprise him with a taxi <laughs> and he said, I didn't call one, but and I said, oh, they, uh, they're asking for you. So you didn't actually have a, a serious relationship right away, in fact, because you left university and then rejoined your family in Tokyo. Yes, just about, I had a semester to go, but because my life had changed so much, meeting Jimmy and, you know, I didn't go to most of my lectures and just sort of started living a life that wasn't going to be very acceptable to my parents. I just thought, okay, it's time to just go home now and regroup. And how did that Talk work Talk to out? mum and dad. How did that work out? <laughs> and explain <laughs> things. Well, um, Jimmy did come over a couple of times and it was a great time for me. I thought, oh, it's a good, good opportunity to maybe pick up another language and learn Japanese. And, um, you know, I got a job at the embassy and sort of there's making peace with my family. And then he came over and then we, we sort of talked to each other into me going back to Sydney, so. But you were obviously aware ahead of time that this is going to be a real change in your life, mm -hmm. a sort of rock yeah. and roll lifestyle. Yes, but change, you know, I, I, love, 
I'm used to it. I, you know, travelling around on postings with my family and with following my father, I was mm. very used to that. So how did and you find the lifestyle initially? Did you go on the road and, and stand in the mosh pit and do all of that? <laughs> no, I never did that, but I did go on the road a little bit, you know, on and off. And you, you, had, um, you started having a family fairly soon in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the marriage? Well, yes, yeah, well, we got married when I was 23 and children, you know, 25. Like these days you realise, oh gosh, you know, you meet a 25-year-old and think, oh, what, you're just a baby. Yeah. Back in the day it was, you know, I suppose we had our children early and um, I'm enjoying that now. I'm glad that we did that in the end because, um, you know, I've got all the grandchildren and we're just experiencing a different life now. Yeah, and you're young enough to enjoy all yes, of that as a result. Right. You can still lift but, them up and mm. give them piggybacks. And <laughs> yep. So did you kind of accept, I suppose, for a time there that um, you had the four children and, and that was your role while Jimmy continue to tour? Mm, absolutely. You know, I, I think um, more than anything, my essence is like, I think motherhood it was something that suited me down to the ground and I was happy to do that. You know, that was my priority. When the children came, they were my priority. Mm. And, you know, our family, within that family, and um, it wasn't hard for me to make yeah. that choice. Yeah, right. Mm. Now, as they got older, uh, that, then the period in your life where booze and, and drugs mm -hmm. uh, started to play a role, um, to what extent, I mean, how bad did it get? We got so bad that the kids actually did an intervention on us. And that's how amazing this family is, that, you know, we, like when they were growing up, we, it was, we always had all their friends come over and be around us so that we could keep an eye on them. And, and it sort of like, I suppose, got worse with us because when they sort of didn't need us there anymore. They were like growing up and everything. And we had all them and all their friends around us. We'd feed them. We'd go and pick them up, you know, if they had snuck out to, a, you know, a club somewhere and one of them was you know, in the footpath, and we'd do all of that. We did all of that and then sort of had our, you know, <laughs> club days probably mm. after they grew up, and then that way we were able to have com communication and conversations with them about drugs and alcohol and, you know, being, um, you know, care careful about all of that. And so when we were going through our period, um, they were able to communicate with us and do an actual intervention and say, you know, guys, it's not about, it's not about you, it's actually about us now and we need you to So it wasn't not just uh, the sort of behaviour that you might expect, you know, with a rock and roll band on the road. It was, I mean, Jimmy's spoken about drinking in the mornings, mm -hmm. uh, there's cocaine and, in fact, I think he said at one stage that... Um, that at this point in his life, I think he only did about three concerts sober. Um, so it was it had reached quite a serious level. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, you know, we went to both went to rehab a few times, mm. a different, dif first by ourselves, and at different times, and then we went together the last time. What do you I think see. led to it, though? Was it was it just the lifestyle? And in his case, he, he said that he, he just felt he wanted to be hammered all the time. Um, I what, think that's what been something you? that Jimmy's wanted to do from childhood trauma ever since he was a child. Mm. It certainly wasn't something I have wanted to do. And I my my addiction was not nearly as bad as his condition. I think mm. his had been happening for a long time. And I think you know, it's okay, you, you, you sort of, like you're sharing a life together, but you're not always in sync, you're not going through problems at the same time. As long as one is sort of holding the fort, I think, you know, and there's a lot of love and all this intention and we communicate, you know, we just manage to, to luck out and get through it. And mm. 
you and know. Did you have the view during this period that, look, it's a stage, this, this is just a stage in our lives and mm -hmm. it will end and then yeah. everything will turn to normal? Or... You, you know, for me, that's exactly, you're absolutely right. Uh -huh. You know, oh, you know, I'm like this at the moment, but I'm not going to be like this all, all the time, you know, forever. So uh -huh. that certainly was something very, um, yeah, very, very true. And as you said, I mean, your family taking it on would really make you sit up and take notice. Oh, it? yeah. Well, you know, um, when your family are very important to you, like, you know, I think if you, um, you know, Jimmy has said before, you know, he married me, but he also, it, I came along with, with my sisters, my brothers, my parents. Yeah. And Jimmy had a, a son from a, a relationship before mm. he met you, but then more recently, I mean, you both discover that um, they'd had two daughters, again, from previous mm -hmm. relationships. So what struck me about that was um, when he found out about this, he described it as a pleasant shock. Um, and I think that's, you know, what I like about that is that that would be a really nice way for the daughters mm -hmm. to hear of this, that um, uh, it, it's inclusive and, and it's welcoming. Mm -hmm. um, is that pretty much the attitude in the, in the family at the time? I, you know, I'm not, I don't see it as a shock. For me, my, my daddy John, John Marnie, married my mother and travelled here. You know, we adopted us and raised him as his own. Not only did he, like, the him and his family make us so welcome, like, he raised my sister as school captain, we played, you know, state sport. He just, like, completely was so generous with his heart and, and you know, there was like a, a big glimpse of love mm. for me. And so my upbringing was not at all, like, you know, like they're Jimmy's children, so I'm not, I, I love, that's the love of my life. So that was Why your initial reaction then? You, you wanted to, to embrace them in the family immediately? Absolutely, yeah. you know. Um, I'm a problem solver, you know, I, anything, you know, around, I just like to, to, to get on with it, solve the problem, you know, have, have, make the best of, of what you have. Yeah. But I, I gather, like, with this book, that it was, um, it was always going to be a venture that was more about just the food. The book showcases your lifestyle in a way, now the new lifestyle. Mm. Uh, well, food has always been the glue of my family and of my, my family, like with my, my siblings um, in that sense, and also with my parent, in parenting and with the children. Um, so it's really, really important. As, uh, as much as music, they're all musicians, all the, all the kids, mm. and working with dad, but you know, it's always just been the glue. It's our way of showing our love. Was the book in any way a product of COVID as well, given the circumstances of that? You know, we talked about it before, just because oh. we wanted to put together a collection of the recipes that the kids, because when they left home, mum, how do we make Anzac biscuits? You know, how, you know what, what's your recipe, blah, blah. So I always thought that that would be, a, a, you know, not published, but, you know, something that we were going to do anyway. And COVID certainly um, gave us the time and the space to do that, to get it done, because otherwise we would have been on a plane, you know, doing the Camino or something or sailing around or, you know, um, or, or on tour. I mean, since Jimmy wrote his first book, I know from that was five years ago, up at, um, you know, until COVID happened, we were just constantly on tour. So during COVID, there was no touring, of course, no travel. Mm -hmm. um, so you initiated this idea in your home of, uh, you know, all of you getting together and doing online performances. You got the whole family involved. That must have been a lot of fun. Well, it is. It's great, you know, when we all get together. The, the, the wonderful thing, I started... I thought, okay, I'll, I'll make use of my time. I'm a busy person too, can't sit still. So I thought I'm going to learn the guitar properly. 
And of course, I'm surrounded by all the musicians. But, you know, I think a lot of it worked was because I've got a singer who can sing louder than my mistakes. So. Anything can happen here. Our kids are driving Saturday afternoon. Just pass me by. And I'm just savoring the familiar sights. We just sort of made a choice, a conscious effort to try and be positive, get out a positive energy, something that's unifying, mm. you know, because it was just became such a divisive time in, in everything, in yeah, everyday yeah. life. Yeah. And, and um, it was a great way of, for Jimmy to keep connect, connecting with his fans because they've always been very important to him. He's um, always had a lot of time for them and now there was no touring you couldn't go out and do concerts, so. Yeah. And it really yeah. did lift the spirits around the country. It had a lot of positive energy. I mm -hmm. think there were like 100 million hits on, on social media. Something crazy like that. Yeah. We did 100 songs at one stage and, you know, we Look. just had a lot of fun with it. It was lo-fi, we just used our iPhones. It wasn't, you know, a huge production. And um, it was something that we could do every day because we, couldn't go anywhere mm. or do anything. So, you know, we, we both learned a lot. Oh, yes, he's a working class man. Mm -hmm. And what else um, lies ahead? I mean, you've been married 40 years. You've been yes. together for, for longer than that. Mm -hmm. But what else do you think the future will hold? Like I keep saying, life is full of changes and change is a part of life. And at the moment, like my parents are in getting older. So that was the other thing that, you know, we've learned a lot about, like my mother's in the dementia ward and my, my father's in the same facility now. And that's really a new life again. Mm. It's like caring for your parents. You know, that's the next stage of, of what, what our priorities are. So it's just the circle of life, isn't it? As you mm -hmm. said, you had the, your children young, so you get to enjoy grandkids yes. and great-grandkids. Great-grandkids. There's, a, there's a couple of great-grandkids too. And, yep. you know, and we're looking, we're going to do a lot more travelling that's not work-related. Yeah. Well, Jimmy puts it this way in the cookbook. He said, um, now we live at the end of a rainbow where the river bends. Mm -hmm. Is it really that good now? I think so. It's been, it's been like that for, for a while. Yeah, great to hear. Well, thank you for joining One Plus One. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.